So if any of you ever wanted to know how I see through my fursuit eyes, if you look really close, you can see like a mesh where there are a lot of little tiny holes and that's how I see through my fursuit eyes pretty much. But yeah, just thought I'd show that to you guys. Pretty cool, huh? But anyway, on to the video. Hi everyone, I'm Stormy the Folk, and today before I get started, I just wanted to let y'all know I finally got one of those uh, Instagram things. The application where people take a lot of selfies and then they post them on the internets and stuff like that. It, I, 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 I'm trying to learn what Instagram is, okay? <laughs> but yeah, I got an Instagram. If you want to add me, my alias is Stormy Folk, just like it is with pretty much everything else I use. So without further ado, Let's begin! I thought I'd discuss all the important things you should know if you're getting a fursuit, you plan to get a fursuit, or if you already have a fursuit. Even if you consider yourself a well-experienced suitor, sometimes it's just good to have a refresher on these subjects. So, fursuiting is a lot more than just putting on a custom-made animal costume and walking around and giving hugs to every person you see. It takes more than just being silly, dancing around, and all that fun stuff. You can have all the fun you want, however, you have to keep your health in mind as well. This is really important. Although that cute little expression on your fursuit may never sleep, you've still got to take care of yourself underneath all that synthetic fur. you still got to do some human things. Your fursuit can't replace everything. It just can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> you need to take care of your actual human self first, and don't forget to take care of your fursuit too. I mean, afterwards of course. Take care of yourself first, fursuit comes next. So I guess we'll start with how to put a fursuit on. This is especially important if you're new to fursuiting. You need to take your time putting on the paws, your feet, your legs, arm sleeves, tail, torso, the head, and so on. Like don't try to force your arm into the arm sleeves if they don't fit for example. If you're not careful, you could rip a seam and make a hole. The same rules apply to any other fursuit parts you try to put on, including the head itself. Contact your suit maker immediately if you're having trouble putting the suit on. Getting frustrated is a terrific way to destroy your fursuit. Just don't do it, please. You may also want to invest in a balaclava to prevent moisture from getting inside your fursuit head. And please, 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 please wear deodorant. <laughs> fursuit vision. Anyone who's been in a fursuit before knows exactly what I'm talking about. But if you haven't, well, when you're in suit, your peripheral vision is affected, if not completely hindered, when wearing a fursuit. Depending on the shape of your fursuit head and how the eyes are constructed, your vision may be blurred, darkened, colorized, have very limited viewing angles, or even a combination of all four. For example, with my fursuit head, my vision is blurred and slightly darkened like this. And I can raise up my paws like this, and although you can see my paws, I can't see them. Now if I start to get closer and closer, I can start to see my paws within the sides of my eyes. But the second I do this, I can't see them. Fursuit vision is very limited with viewing angles for the most part. You're almost always going to have issues with viewing angles when you're, when you're in fursuit. Now what this means for you, the fursuiter, is that you'll have to take things slow when it comes to walking around and navigating areas. <clears throat> Even familiar ones like your house or whatever, you really, really don't want to bump into anything and ruin your brand new $500 plus fursuit head. Now, if you already have vision impairments or you have to wear glasses or contacts or whatever, let your suit maker know so they can accommodate. <laughs> Depending on the fit of your head, if you don't let them know that you wear glasses, it's possible that your fursuit head may not fit because they're not compensating for the extra space that you may need to wear your glasses in fursuit. I have heard of this happening. Now, aside from your vision, ability to touch, feel, and operate physical objects is also hindered as well. Like, to the best of my knowledge, it's pretty much impossible to use a phone with your paws on, especially if they're puffy paws like this. Like, I can barely turn doorknobs with my puffy paws. It's almost impossible. Forget about trying to send a text or calling someone. Even if you feel confident enough to walk around in fursuit, the last thing you should do is go to some heavily populated convention by yourself full of a bunch of hardcore, dedicated fans of a certain fandom that all want to hug you, and if they hug you, you don't want to stink. And they shouldn't stink either. At least I would hope. That would be very bad. Or worse, you forget to drink water, and then you faint from overheating and dehydration. 
This is where a fursuit handler comes in. If you don't know what a handler is, it's basically someone who helps the fursuiter walk around so you don't bump into anything, you don't trip on something because of your limited peripheral vision, as I was previously discussed. They help with you navigating the con floor, reminding you to stay hydrated, take breaks, because it's very easy to get lost in the moment when you're hugging and talking to a lot of people, and time can fly by pretty fast. I should know, I've done this, I almost fainted, and that wasn't fun. <laughs> Handlers are there for your safety and well-being, or at least they should be. Always bring a handler with you if you plan on fursuiting. Going to a busy furry con floor without a handler, especially if it's a con you've never been before, is just asking for trouble. I can guarantee you at some point or another, you're going to bump into something or maybe even trip and fall and possibly damage your expensive fursuit. Now unless you want to destroy your brand new fursuit, please don't do this, okay? Anyway, get a handler. Bring a friend or a roommate with you. It's essential. Next thing you want to do is make sure you take frequent breaks if you're fursuiting. That goes double or triple if you're wearing a full suit in a warm climate. I find that it's best to take breaks in the headless lounge every 30 to 45 minutes to no more than an hour. I personally wouldn't go more than an hour myself in suit without taking a breather. Take breaks, go to the bathroom, drink plenty of fluids, keep yourself hydrated, and at some point during the day, don't forget to eat. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I don't just mean eat Little Debbie snack cakes all day. <laughs> Failure to follow these steps can result in sluggishness, feeling weak, faint, lightheaded, grogginess, and if it's bad enough, unconsciousness. Ever seen a fursuit cut open before because they passed out? That's not a pretty sight. Oh, and if you're going to eat in fursuit, at least take your fursuit head off. That might seem like common sense already, but there are a few su su <laughs> suitors who will do this and get their heads all dirty with Cheetos dust, and you don't want that. At least, I wouldn't want that anyway. Also, if you have a condition that causes you to stay warm or overheat, even out of suit, please, please, please take extra precautions here. Moral of the story is fursuiting is like the ultimate exercise for your body's cooling system. And it can get quite exhausting after a while, which is one of the many reasons breaks are so important. Now let's say you had your fun for the day and you go back to your ho <laughs> hotel room. Now let's say you had your fun for the day and you go back to your hotel room finally got it. You better take a shower or at least take one as soon as you wake up the next day. Because if you don't, people are gonna know. You can smell a musky husky a mile away. Take a shower or a bath. Please? No one wants to be around that kind of stink. <coughs> also, remember to lay your fursuit out to dry. I like to use a small fan to dry out my fursuit head. And things like fursuit spray can keep your suit smelling nice and clean. And at some point, if you can afford it, invest in Under Armour. Seriously, it is a great asset to fursuiting because it can keep your body's moisture from getting into the suit material. As you prepare for the next day, lay your suit out flat and brush it. Like, get one of these pet brushes. They sell them, I think, at Walmart or PetSmart. You want to get the ones with these soft plastic bristles. Brush your suit in the direction the fur follows. See? Like my paw right here, you want to brush in the direction it follows. In this case, I'm brushing down towards the claws. If you brush the other way, you're going to bunch up the fur and potentially cause matting. And after the fur mats, you, you're, it's, it's not going to be easy to brush that all out. And there can be dire consequences when your fur starts to mat up, like balding, which is exactly what it sounds like. Don't do it. Brush your suit properly and just brush your suit in general. It keeps your suit looking nice and clean and pretty. And unlike a real life, and unlike real life fur, once you lose that fur, it ain't growing back. Now, it's totally normal to lose a little bit of fur every time you brush your fur suit. That's just gonna happen. Fur suits don't have an infinite lifespan. And at some point in the future, you may need to have your fur suit referred. But I'm getting off topic. That's another story for another video. Try to brush your suit at least once a day if you plan on wearing it at a con. And after some point, you'll need to wash your fur suit. This is a subject I really have to cover in another video. But if you do own a fur suit, 
please consult with your fursuit maker first before you just toss your suit in the wash. There can be dire consequences if you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> well, I can't think of anything else at the moment that would warrant a place in this video, but if you know something I should have mentioned, let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, maybe leave a comment, uh, subscribe, and ring the little bell thing, and share it with your friendos. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.